Let's take a look at lines of symmetry. So here's an example of an irregular shape, an arrow. Now this arrow, if I were to fold it along this line here, then this bottom side, if I were to fold it upwards, would sit perfectly on the top part here. And there would be no overlap at all. So this line here would be called its line of symmetry. It's the line where if you make a fold, one half sits perfectly on the other. If I were to make a fold down the middle, this is not a line of symmetry because this rectangular part on the left hand side will not sit perfectly on the right hand side with no overlap because these pointy triangle bits would, uh, would overlap. So this arrow only has one line of symmetry and that is that horizontal line there. A square has a line of symmetry going vertically and also one going horizontally and it also has a line of symmetry going across the two diagonals. So in total a square has four lines of symmetry. A rectangle we can fold it down the center like so and we can uh, we can fold it horizontally as well so it has two lines of symmetry. Unfortunately if you try to fold diagonally and try and get this corner into that corner it won't work and if it doesn't make sense to you just give it a go see if you can fold a rectangle and and fold it across the diagonal and see if you can get the corners to match up uh, it just won't happen so a rectangle only has two lines of symmetry for a pentagon or a regular pentagon it has five lines of symmetry it has one going down the middle it also has one down here. In fact, this is practically this is the same line of symmetry. Basically, if we imagined that if we were to rotate this um, sort of one fifth of the way round, so that this point is now here, then you know it's an identical line of symmetry. So we've got another one here as well. So that's the third. Here is the, the fourth, and there is the fifth. So if it is a regular shape, the lines of symmetry is the same as the number of sides. So a pentagon has five sides and also has five lines of symmetry. This is um, a hexagon um, and it's a regular hexagon, or at least it's supposed to be. So therefore a hexagon which has six sides will have six lines of symmetry. It's got one from corner to corner here, one from corner to corner here, one from corner to corner here. I can't say one from this corner to the other corner because that is the same line of symmetry. However, it does have a line of symmetry right through the middle, right through the middle of those two lines of symmetry and right through the middle of those two lines of symmetry as well. So we can see that a hexagon has six lines of symmetry. For completely irregular shapes, then sometimes there are no lines of symmetry. This uh, thunderbolt, there's no way I can fold this in, there's, there's no way I can fold it down the center or in any direction it's just impossible for me to fold it so that one half sits perfectly on the other same with this arrow if I fold it there it, it won't uh, it won't match up uh, same if I fold it there it will look it just won't the one half will not sit on the other half perfectly and th this shape here again it's gonna it's fairly close if I if I fold this onto this side here we won't um, have a perfect match because there's that bit there missing. So all of these shapes here have zero lines of symmetry. So completely irregular shapes um, often have zero lines of symmetry. With two dimensional shapes like a circle for example uh, or this a circle has infinite lines of symmetry but you'll never get asked the question how many lines of symmetry does a circle have. However other circle properties are really important. For example a circle has one side. A circle has zero corners. It has zero angles and infinite lines of symmetry. If we look at um, a square, so we know that a square has four sides. A square has the same number of corners as it does sides, so four corners. If it has four corners then it also has four angles and these angles are all right angles. And as we've discussed already, it has one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. 
So with a square, four is the key number. With a rectangle, again, it's got four sides, four angles, and four corners. But the lines of symmetry are not quite the same. It only has one, two lines of symmetry because the diagonals don't work. For triangles, so on the left-hand side, we have an equilateral triangle. In the middle, we have an isosceles triangle and on the right, we have a right angled triangle. However, you can't look at them and say for sure that they're equilateral isosceles or right angle. Normally, you would be given a bit more information. Um, sometimes in the question, they will tell you that it's equilateral isosceles or a right angled triangle. Sometimes you get these little marks here. These dots, uh, these dashes here tell us that these three sides are the same. And when a triangle has three side lengths the same, then it is an equilateral triangle. With an isosceles, you might get the dashes here and here that tells us that these two sides are the same. So an, is uh, an isosceles has two sides the same length and a right angle triangle has a right angle, which is usually marked with this square angle here. Now, one key property of triangles is they all have three sides. An equilateral triangle is a regular triangle, so that is going to have one, two, three lines of symmetry. The uh, isosceles only has one line of symmetry, and the right angle triangle, well, this one has zero lines of symmetry, uh, but if it's, an, if it's an isosceles right angle triangle, if this side here was the same as this side here, then it would have one line of symmetry. So a right angle triangle is either zero or one line of symmetry. Uh, corners, again, they all have three corners. They all have three angles and three sides. And another key fact is that the angles inside the triangle must all add up to 180 degrees.